The iconic Dodge Charger, used in police forces as well as used as regular family sedans all across America. Although the Dodge Charger is a full-size sedan, the typical buyer is on average 15 years younger than somebody who is usually in the market for a vehicle in this segment. And that means that the average buyer of this car is somebody who identifies as either a millennial or a Gen X. Now, what we've got here today is the second generation of the Dodge Charger, and this is based on the LX and the LD platform, which was introduced all the way back in 2004. That was for the first generation. This is the second generation, which was introduced in 2011, and the vehicle received a facelift in 2015. The second generation Dodge Charger, what we've got here, incorporates styling elements from the 1968 through 1970 Charger. So essentially, it just gives the car, you know, a lot more aggressive looks and it just makes it more rounded as well. But of course, it has quite a bit of road presence. The Dodge Charger is available in either V6 or V8 configurations. What we've got here is the V6. So this is the one we're going to be focusing on. Now, this engine puts out 290 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. So that's plenty for everyday use getting around town or just cruising on the highway. Now, when you factor in the weight of the car, as well as the engine, the power that this engine puts out, you're getting a zero to 60 time in the low sixes, which is not too bad. And the Dodge Charger is also available in either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive configurations. The all-wheel drive system was essentially derived from Mercedes-Benz 4MATIC technology and it's pretty clever in the sense that the vehicle automatically deactivates sending power to the front wheels when it's not needed in order to conserve fuel. Speaking of fuel economy, the Dodge Charger gets 31 miles per gallon of fuel on the highway which when this car was launched it was regarded as having the best fuel economy in its class. Now what we've got here today specifically is the Dodge Charger SXT V6. But even more so, we have the optional black top package, which is a nice aesthetic package that you get on the car. So for one, you get these gloss black gauges, you get a black front fascia and a rear deck lid spoiler as well. You also get these gorgeous 20 inch graphite dark gray wheels wrapped in 24540 tires, and you get a sport suspension as well. The Dodge Charger also features more than 80 safety and security features as well. Some of them include your forward full speed collision warning system, your lane departure alert with keep assist with subtle inputs in the steering to make sure that you're getting back into your lane should you veer out of it. The Dodge Charger also incorporates park assist, which essentially means when you're backing up, the vehicle will automatically come to a complete stop should it detect a vehicle that's going by and there's a risk for a potential collision. Now, the back seat of the Dodge Charger is a nice place to be, and you would expect that given the fact that this is a full-size sedan. Now, I'm a 5'9 guy, and I have the driver's seat set to exactly where I would have it if I was driving. And sitting back here comfortably, I have at, at least 4 inches of room here before my knee hits the seat, which is to be expected in a sedan like this. But I have tons of room. I'm not claustrophobic. I feel very comfortable back here. I have these vents here, which is great because I get my own air. And I got two USB power outlets right down here as well, so I can charge my phone as well. And another cool thing about the Dodge Charger is that you do have heated rear seats as an option, and for the driver, there's even an optional heated steering wheel as well. Okay, so now we are finally behind the wheel of the 2021 Dodge Charger V6. This is the SXT with the black top package. And initial impressions, it drives very nicely. You got this electronically assisted power steering here, which uh, means steering is very light. You can drive this car with two fingers if you wanted to. And when you have the sport suspension that the blacktop package has, you know, the car feels a little firmer than normal, but uh, you do get the extra stiffness in the suspension. So when it makes driving through these back roads uh, a joy to drive, to say the least. Now, of course, this is the V6, so you do have that 300 horsepower. That pretty much suffices for everyday use, I would say, for just a daily uh, grocery getter, daily driver kind of a car. So we're at a complete stop. I'm going to go ahead and give it some gas. little bumpy road there but yeah I mean we uh, we do take off pretty well so that's pretty nice as far as interior comfort goes I'm pretty comfortable here I mean I do have the fabric seats here there is the optional leather on the charger but what we've got here are the fabric seats and they do a pretty good job at keeping me straight here and keeping me composed so I'm not complaining 
Now, as far as uh, taking this on a long road trip, I don't see how there would be a problem with, uh, as far as comfort goes as well, because these seats do seem to do a pretty good job. They are pretty buckety, so they do have that nice sportiness to them as well, because after all, this is more sport oriented. But this car drives pretty nice. It's very smooth. I'm uh, driving along here doing about 40 miles an hour, not, not too terribly fast, but it is pretty quiet in here. So Dodge did a pretty good job as far as sound deadening and making the cabin nice and quiet so you can have a conversation without having to raise your voice. So the eight-speed automatic in the Charger does uh, allow you to get up to power pretty quickly because you have all those gears and uh, it makes the car drive pretty uh, economically as well as far as fuel goes. But even just from taking off, merging in the highways, just cruising along here, it, it's very nice. I'm getting very nice feedback in the pedal. The pedal feels very good. Um, there's no delays, anything observable, so to speak. A car that is pretty practical in the sense that it's, it's large. You can carry four or five people pretty reasonably. You get a large trunk. Brakes are pretty good on here as well. Again, through these back roads, it, it feels planted and it feels pretty good. And I think that this is a, a very fun cruiser. And I can only imagine what the V8 would be like to drive. Okay, so now I'm driving through some roads here where the roads are not that great. You got a couple potholes, a couple bumps, and even though we've got the sport suspension equipped on this particular Charger, I mean, the car does handle these bumps pretty well. We got some bumps right there, and you know, it's not like my neck is strained or my back hurts or anything like that. Now, if I have any complaints with this car, I want to focus with the interior because that's pretty much where they all are. So for one, you got this dashboard here, which is a solid rubber. So that's good in the sense that 10, 15 years down the line, I don't expect this to crack and just look ugly. But at the same time, given the material finish that it's made out of, uh, it, it, it pretty much just looks like a, a cork just painted black. And it's not the most attractive looking thing, especially up here. And then it just contours down to where the airbag is for the passenger. But even more so, the whole theme just continues onto the door panels here. And it just looks cheap. It doesn't look too terribly nice. But I mean, I was hoping that the dash would look a little nicer for a car that's in the thirty to $40,000 range. Uh, but I mean, regardless, that's what you have. The other thing is the steering wheel here, you got these buttons on the backside for changing the volume and changing the input like AM, FM, Sirius XM, and then uh, pretty much just changing through your favorites here. It's not the most ergonomic thing. And then the other thing is just the backup camera. Now for a car like this, the backup camera is not the worst, but it's really not that great either. I was hoping that the backup camera would be a little better for uh, a car at this price point and especially given its size. It is a full-size sedan and uh, it, it does take up quite a bit of room on the road as well so just something that would have been nice to have I would say if the backup camera was a little better okay so overall what do I think of the 2021 Dodge Charger v6 black top package I think that this is a pretty nice car if you're just looking for something to use every day run some errands go to work go to the grocery store supermarket maybe do a little road trip every now and then you got all that room in the back your rear passengers will be pretty comfortable as well. And I mean, you do got plenty of options, plenty of tech on board. You got the Apple CarPlay, like uh, like I've demonstrated a little earlier. You do get a pretty simple climate control system up here as well. So it's not gonna be too much of a hassle. The infotainment screen has some options in here so you can customize exactly how you want your particular charger to behave as far as lights and sounds go and sound settings and all that good stuff. But Overall, for a car in this price range, you know, $30,000, $35,000, this is not bad. Now, of course, when you look at Chrysler's uh, track, Chrysler's history of reliability and longevity, only time will tell uh, as far as what this car will be like to own five, 10 years from now when it's had, you know, 100,000 miles, 150,000 miles, because again, given Chrysler's track record, uh, it's not really been the greatest, but I'm pretty sure that they've done their homework here and that they've stepped their game up and they've uh, brought a lot to the table here and this is a this is a good fighter against the Camry the Accord the Fusion although I do feel like with the technology and the options in the Camry you do get more for your money with that car and then of course all things considered longevity reliability but 
if you wanted to get a car, a domestic brand, I think that you have a pretty good option here with the 2021 Charger. So ultimately, what is the final verdict? I think Dodge pretty much has a winner here on their hands. So I know that this uh, Charger has been out since 2011. It's gotten the facelift back in 2015. So they've had a lot of time to perfect this and fix all the problems and some of the issues with it. And overall, I think what they're presenting here, I think this is a, a pretty concise and pretty thorough package. So once again, I think if you're in the market for a domestic brand, you're looking for a car that has pretty good road presence and it looks nice and it's got some attitude, I would say, look no further. The Dodge Charger definitely has a lot of character. It's got the history backing it up. And in a car like this, at this price point, you, you are getting pretty much all the features that you really need uh, to have a normal everyday car and one that you can enjoy driving. So it's not like you're going to be missing out on, on some key features as well. So I think Dodge pretty much knocked it out of the park. So with that, I hope that you guys enjoyed this review on the 2021 Dodge Charger V6. If you enjoyed this video as much as I did filming it, please go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you are new to the channel, be sure to also hit that bell icon to make sure you receive updates for when I post new videos. Go ahead and check me out on Instagram, at Garage Denali. Thank you very much. Take care.